So measuring the change in internal energy for chemical reactions. So energy meets chemistry. Um, the system, um, we usually refer to the, uh, the reaction as the system, and then the surroundings are everything else. And so there's two ways that energy can be transferred between the system and the surroundings. One is heat, and we've looked at that. Q equals mc delta T. Or we could have work, that pressure volume work. So work is negative P delta V. Well, we can look at what happens at constant volume. So um, remember that delta E is the change in internal energy. So the change in internal energy is the heat plus the work. The work, as we saw right here, work is negative P times the change in V. If the change in volume is zero, what does the work equal? Zero. So with constant volume, W equals zero. So if this is zero, that's out of the equation, literally. And then delta E equals Q. We put a little subscript V on there to indicate that that's the heat at constant volume. So the change in energy for the reaction will equal heat at constant volume. Well, that heat, Q equals mc delta T, we can measure that by looking at changes in temperature. But we can't measure the changes in temperature for individual chemicals in a reaction because they're all in there together. So what we do is we look at the, how the reaction causes a change in temperature in the surroundings. And that's much easier to measure. So we use what's called a bomb calorimeter. Let's just skip ahead and look at that. This is an illustration of a bomb calorimeter. So here, this is the bomb part. Um, and of course, it's not an explosive bomb. But it's an airtight um, chamber um, so that the volume can't change. Nothing can escape. And so the volume will be constant. And then delta V equals 0. There are um, ignition wire leads coming in here. And there will be oxygen present in here. You put a sample in here. And, and you can burn it. This is one way they can measure calorie content of food. You just put the food in there, you know, maybe a, a handful of peanuts, you've weighed them, you stick them in there, you burn them, and by the amount of heat given off, you can, you can figure out how many kilojoules or what per gram of peanut. So all of the heat that's given off by this reaction gets transferred to the water surrounding it in the calorimeter. The outside walls of this are insulated. We have a stirring mechanism here so that the water circulates and maintains a uniform temperature. The energy released by this reaction gets absorbed by the water, and the temperature goes up. We have a thermometer, and we measure the change in temperature. So the heat from the system is equal to, but opposite in sign, to the heat from the surroundings. I gave the example of giving Tommy $2 for lunch. This morning I gave Michael $10 for lunch. He only needed five, but all I had was a $10 bill. Right? So the amount of money changing hands is $10. For, for Michael, it would be positive. For me, it would be negative. It's the same number. We just changed the sign but equal in magnitude. So Q system equals negative Q surroundings. Um, here, the surroundings are the calorimeter, the water that is changing temperature. So calorimetry is a technique where we measure <laughs> the heat of a reaction by looking at changes in the temperatures of the surroundings. And if you look at the roots of this word, calorie, referring to heat, and metry, referring to measuring. So it's just measuring heat. Heat is transferred between the system and the surroundings. So the heat absorbed by the calorimeter is equal to um, a heat capacity for the calorimeter times the change in temperature that we observe. We don't use a specific heat capacity for the calorimeter because it's always filled with the same mass of water. Um, 
And so there's no need to put the mass and a specific heat capacity. They're combined in this one term, also known as a calorimeter constant. So the energy gained or received by the calorimeter is opposite in sign, but equal in magnitude to the heat from the reaction. And that reaction heat is the delta E reaction. Any questions so far? Well, we can do an example here. When 1.550 grams of liquid hexane undergoes combustion in a bomb calorimeter, the temperature rises from 25.87 degrees Celsius to 38.13 degrees Celsius. Find delta E reaction for the reaction in kilojoules per mole hexane. The heat capacity of the bomb calorimeter, which was determined in a separate experiment, is 5.73 kilojoules per degree Celsius. So the big idea here is that delta E reaction equals QV. So the heat at constant volume. It's a bomb calorimeter. The volume is constant. So that is equal to the heat from the reaction. And that is equal to negative Q for the calorimeter. OK? Well, what is Q for the calorimeter? Usually we do Q equals MC delta T. But for the bomb calorimeter, we, we combine M and C. And so it's not C sub S. It's just C for the calorimeter times the change in temperature. We're given the calorimeter constant. This guy right here, that's the calorimeter constant. How do we find the change in temperature? Subtract. Subtracting. It's final minus initial. So T final minus T initial. And that's important to get that straight, because otherwise you'll have the sign backwards. So the final temperature is 38.13 degrees Celsius. The initial temperature is 25.87 degrees Celsius. 38.13 minus 25.87, 12.26. It's not negative, but that's a, that's a question. OK, so the, the way the sign works with the temperature, if the temperature goes up, that's a positive change. That makes sense, right? Usually, like, when we graph things, the vertical axis going up is positive and <coughs> down is negative. So temperature rising is going to be a positive change. If it went from a high temperature to a low temperature, when we do T final minus T initial, then we'll get a negative number. Negative temperature change is absolutely fine. OK. So there's our temperature. Uh, so we have these two terms. We can plug them into our little equation here. So we have um, the calorimeter constant, 5.73 kilojoules. And I just want to remind you, make that a vertical fraction, because degree Celsius is in the denominator. And when you do it with a slash, sometimes you miss that, times 12.26 degrees Celsius. See, the units are your friends. They tell you, oh, hey, this, this is probably going to work out OK. 0.573. So my calculator gives me 70.2498. The units on that are kilojoules. How many significant figures should that have? Three. Our calorimeter constant only has three. The temperature has four. So is that delta E for the reaction? No, that's the heat that the, the calorimeter got. This is a positive number. So for the calorimeter, the calorimeter warmed up. It received energy. 
Q for the reaction is the same number but change the sign. So Q for the reaction is going to be negative 70.2498 kilojoules. What is the requested unit for delta E? Kilojoules per mole. This is the amount of energy released by 1.550 grams of hexane. Which, you know, if you're going to do another experiment, it's probably not going to be 1.550 grams of hexane. And so we, we would like something that we could use for other things. So we want kilojoules per mole. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our number of kilojoules and divide by the number of moles. We need to take this mass and the given formula and find the number of moles. It matters because if you have more hexane, you're going to get more heat. If you have less hexane, you're going to have less heat. So molar mass of hexane. Um, we've got six carbons and 14 hydrogens. Um, 86.172, did I do that right? Grams per mole. So if I have 1.550 grams of hexane, then I want to put my units in so I have moles on top and grams on the bottom. So put the 86.172 down there for one mole, 1.55 divided by 86.172, 0.0. One seven nine eight seven three moles. That's the number of moles. So delta E is going to equal negative seventy point. 2498 kilojoules divided by 0 0.017987373 moles. So my calculator says minus 3905.5 kilojoules per mole. When we look at the significant figures, the top number had 3, the bottom had 4, so this should have 3. We need to be careful when we round that number. You can't round it to minus 391 because that would change it. It's minus 3,000, right? So the safest thing is to put it in scientific notation. One, two, three, put the decimal point here. Minus 3 point, it's going to end up rounding to 9, 1 times 10 to the 3 kilojoules <coughs> per mole. Any questions? So I could round this, um, I, could, I could call this negative 3910, bless you, kilojoules per mole. My experience has been that a lot of students forget to write the zero there, and they write minus 391, which is one of my pet peeves, but I, I can't seem to make any headway on that.
<coughs> is I just tell people, put it in scientific notation, and then, then you'll be okay. Any other questions? <coughs>